The Zenoscope um, has three components. It has a light source, uh, which is much like um, the light bulb in, 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 this, in this room. And it has a detector that's able to um, discern between the different colors of light. So much like a prism. And then you have to have this device get the light to and from the, the site of interest, the tissue of interest. And so you don't want to box right up against that. And so we use um, fiber optics, basically a conduit for light delivery and collection um, arranged in a certain configuration that's essentially placed like a pen is placed on, on a piece of paper um, against the tissue. And then what happens is um, light is basically delivered and uh, different colors of light um, is delivered to the tissue. And that light actually intercepts different molecules within the tissue, and a fraction of it comes out and is received by the detector fiber. And that then is delivered to the detector, this prism, which basically uh, disperses the light and then collects the signal at different colors. And this is the reflected light that we measure. And we measure it in the visible um, spectral range, so in the visible part of the uh, spectrum. And then what um, Xenolux has done is basically developed um, this software, which allows you to take that data that's been collected by this instrument and fiber optic probe uh, through a model that accurately describes light transport and tissue. It's called a Monte Carlo model um, because it's one of the uh, few model, it, it, and, and the Monte Carlo model is one of the few models that accurately can describe the um, nature of light transport and tissue. And so it takes this model and speeds it up so that you can actually use the sophisticated model in a pragmatic clinical setting to get the underlying tissue composition. So you feed in this data, you get this underlying tissue composition, and then you can begin to interpret what's actually happening with respect to the biology of the tissue. The Xenoscope can measure our um, parameters that relate to the vascular physiology of the tissue. So hemoglobin saturation, which tells you how oxygenated the blood is in the capillaries um, that feed the tumor, if we're talking about oncology. Um, total hemoglobin concentration, which tells you how vascular the tissue is. Think of it as the sort of the density of red blood cells per unit volume. Um, we can measure a parameter called scattering, which is a very interesting parameter that we have shown is related to essentially the presence, the density of, 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 of cells in um, the tissue. And in addition, uh, we have the ability to add more biomarkers to this platform. That's what makes it so flexible um, to actually look at metabolism, um, as well as any contrast agent, any exogenous agent. Let's say you're introducing a cancer drug that's fluorescent. You could actually monitor the uptake of this drug, the concentration of this drug as it's delivered to the tissue. So really beyond these intrinsic uh, molecules and tissue that I just described, you have the ability to open this up to any application where there might be contrast agents or drugs that have inherent optical properties that you could quantify with the very same technology without any additional um, modifications. The Zenoscope as a tool that provides quantitative information, biological information, information that can be obtained quickly, which means that you could do dynamic measurements. And of course, this goes without saying, can do it without having to physically take out any tissue so it's completely non-destructive. We measure biomarkers that relate to the vascular physiology and the morphology of cancer. So one of the things that we know very well about tumors is as they grow, there's more cells to feed. As there are more cells to feed, the oxygen in the vascular system gets depleted more quickly than it is supplied. So one of the hallmarks of um, a tumor that's um, really outstripped its resources is hypoxia, which is an oxygen deficit, a severe oxygen deficit, which 
in, in and of itself causes a cascade of really um, undesirable consequences. It helps the tumor grow. We can measure that. The other um, aspect of a tumor is as it grows, it needs more blood vessels, but it doesn't do this in a systematic way. It just starts to sprout vessels, um, just like the branches of a tree, I guess. And so what happens then is you have this convoluted mess of blood vessels, which increases the overall vascularity of the tumor. You can measure that with total hemoglobin. And I mentioned that one of the hallmarks of carcinogenesis is cell proliferation. So if you have a higher density of cells, you could essentially measure that with scattering. Or if there's a modification to the size of the cell, like let's say it's dying, right? You could actually measure that change. And we have indeed shown that we are able to, um, the, the scattering parameter that we have measured actually relates, it relates to certain um, types of cell death, necrosis in particular, and we have published on that. So in a sense, we're actually looking at features that are fundamental to the way the tumor grows.